Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Nissan Murano. This is a four-door SUV with seating for five and this particular trim is the SV all-wheel drive. Daytime running lights, fog lights, LEDs all over. It also has an active grill shutter up front. This vehicle has a coefficient of drag of 0.31, which is actually really good for an SUV, and it's better than the rest of the SUVs which I've tested. MSRP as tested comes to 37515 Nice large trunk. You can also fold down the rear seat, 60-40 split. And check this out. This is pretty interesting. They've actually mounted one of the subwoofers inside of the spare tire. So it's actually, there's a hole in the center of it, uh, which is holding down both the subwoofer and the spare tire. And this is just resting inside of this spare. Okay, let's have a look under the hood. Guest shocks for support. So as you can see, packaging in here is pretty tight. Not much extra space in here. This engine cover, uh, it does require tools to remove. You've got your battery easily accessible up front on the driver's side, brake fluid reservoir, and you've got your air filter. It does have quick clips to access it, so that's nice, as well as the fuse box there. Checking the other side, you've got your coolant reservoir, power steering fluid, windshield washer fluid, your radiator cap, engine oil fill, and then you do have a dipstick down in here as well. This is a 3.5 liter V6 engine, dual overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, variable valve timing on both the intake and the exhaust, aluminum block and heads. It produces 260 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 240 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. Now following the path of the intake air, not a lot you can see, but it comes in up front here, passes through this resonator into the air filter, back to the electronically controlled throttle body, and then into the plastic intake manifold, which is located underneath this. After traveling out of the engine, exits one of two exhaust manifolds and heads towards the rear. The exhaust collects into a single pipe, which travels to the rear and then exits through one of two tailpipes. Power is sent to all four wheels through a CVT transmission. At all four corners, Michelin 235 over 65 R18 tires. Up front, 12.6 inch ventilated disc brakes. This is matched with a McPherson strut style suspension. Some good use of materials as you've got aluminum for the knuckle here as well as the lower control arm. So good for reducing the unsprung mass. You've got your steering connection right here, the anti-roll bar linking up with the strut and you can see your drive axle coming in. Checking out the rear, this is a multi-link suspension setup. We've got 12.1 inch ventilated disc brakes. You can see additional use of aluminum, the upper control arm here as well as below. Now back here you can see the anti-roll bar and actually based on the spec sheet this is larger than the front anti-roll bar which is a bit unusual to see. Uh, that said with my own measurements it seems that the front anti-roll bar is about half a millimeter larger. And the other thing to keep in mind is that you know you can use uh, different leverage arms in order to create different leverage with these control arms. So even if one's larger you know material differences and the leverage at which it's acted upon can change uh, how much force it's actually going to transmit to the other side. That said, it is pretty unusual. I don't think any of the vehicles I've tested so far have had a larger rear anti-roll bar than in the front. As you can see, separate coil and shock and a very long drive axle coming in here. Okay, so let's check out the interior. Keyless entry, you've also got a button on the outside of the handle to lock and unlock it, and you also do have remote start. Okay, sitting in the interior. I think one of the first things you'll notice is just how comfortable these seats are. I was at an event up in Washington, and there was 27 vehicles that we got to test drive all in the same day, and of those 27 vehicles, I found the Nissan Murano seats to be the most comfortable, and I didn't know why. I just thought, you know, they were very comfortable seats. And then it turns out, if you look on the Monroney sticker of the Nissan Murano, these are, quote, NASA-inspired zero-gravity front and rear outboard seats. Very fancy. Uh, but basically, the whole point is the seats are kind of designed, and there's a lot of research put into them to not have any fatigue, and they're actually very comfortable, good amount of cushion to them. So that's probably one of the highlights of this vehicle is just how comfortable these seats are. Now, moving on to the steering wheel. Leather wrapped, uh, feels fine. You've got all kinds of controls on it. Your phone, you can mess with the display settings. You've got uh, volume adjustment, cruise control. Now looking ahead at this display, you've got all kinds of information that it gives you. Average fuel economy, average speed, driving distance, driving time. You can select through that, look at your instantaneous fuel economy, uh, your tire pressures, warnings, settings direction that you are facing, your Bluetooth controls, a compass, and then back to your drive computer. So a very simple, straightforward setup up here where you've got the tack on the left and speedometer on the right, coolant temperature as well as your fuel gauge. And then you do also have down at the bottom how many miles till empty in your tank. 
On the left, you do have automatic windows for the front driver and passenger. You've got electronically adjustable side mirrors. You can turn off the traction control here and adjust the brightness of your display with this button right here. Now, moving on to the infotainment system, really nice large screen you've got here, and you know, the controls overall are pretty straightforward. So, you know, you can go right to your audio, you can go straight to your map, you can go right to the main menu, and all of this is real simple to use up on front, switch to the camera. I do like how kind of simple and intuitive this is to use, so I appreciate that. And it's got, you know, everything you need, the navigation, you can hook up your phone, play your audio, adjust the audio settings, things like that. Moving down, you've got your climate control settings, uh, and fairly straightforward once again, you know, you've got simple buttons for turning on either of the defrosts. You do have to select between, you know, which of these settings you want to use. So that's the one thing that kind of you could just sit there and have to scroll through. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple to use. Now you don't have paddle shifters, but you can put the gear selector into this manual selection mode and select between preset gear ratios in the CVT transmission. Now as far as storage, you've got some space down here. There's also another little compartment just below this center console area on both sides. And then you also do have the glove compartment. And what I like about this is they have a separate compartment in here for your user manual so it doesn't take up really any of the space of the glove compartment. You also have this large center console area, plenty of space in here, and this little removable tray. Now as far as visibility, out the front is pretty good, though the front windshield is pretty far away from the driver. Checking the rear, not too bad overall, though you do have this large area where the depeller is, where it's kind of blocked out, so not that great uh, in that direction, but aside from that, pretty good. And then checking your blind spot, not bad at all. So overall, visibility is pretty good. You also do have this large panoramic sunroof, which is pretty nice. So sitting in the rear, these seats are honestly just as comfortable as up front and as you can see I've got plenty of leg room so a decent distance in front of me and the seat ahead which is adjusted to where I will be driving and I'm about 6'1". You've got power windows here and you also have AC vents as well as a USB input there. And you also have this little storage compartment right here which you know you can sit your phone, uh, perhaps use it as a selfie stand if you want to take a picture of yourself. You can find that on my Instagram. Folding down this center area, you've got two cup holders here and additional storage, so pretty nice overall back here. Plenty of features for the rear occupants, uh, and it's comfortable. Now, if I do move over to the center, well, headroom and legroom now suddenly are a bit limited. That said, you know, it, it does kind of work. I mean, I could manage if I had to, so if you do have some smaller occupants, they could definitely fit uh, in this section of the vehicle and not have any problems for a decent trip. Not quite as comfortable as the other seats, but, you know, it does work. Okay, let's go for a test drive. So we'll just kind of walk through the different systems, starting with acceleration. Now, I wouldn't say the engine is inspired by NASA. Uh, they'd probably add a few thousand horsepower, but it does have decent pull to it. You know, 260 horsepower isn't all that bad, and matched with the CVT, it can get up to the high RPMs pretty quickly and give you pretty good power. The throttle pedal itself feels pretty good. You know, a good linear growth to it as you press your foot down, and, you know, the whole thing is pretty much responsive, so there's not any part of it where it's just kind of like a small dead band. The whole thing is pretty active, uh, and it feels pretty good. The brake pedal feels not too much travel you know kind of in the middle of where some things are a bit more aggressive some things are a bit less aggressive it does have a good build to it where you know initially it doesn't do all that much and then as you push your foot down it progressively gets quite a bit stronger as far as how much braking you actually have now the steering feel is actually extremely light probably one of the lightest feels um, of the vehicles i've driven so it kind of makes the whole driving experience very effortless which i can imagine can be uh, a benefit for a lot of people you know they don't want to put much effort into it and just have this really effortless driving experience the seats are super comfortable the suspension is really soft the interior is actually really really quiet and the steering wheel is pretty effortless so pretty much the whole experience you know is just kind of this effortless this comfortable thing uh, and you can get where you're going and you've got your point A to point B commuter that does it all in a really comfortable fashion. Now the CVT itself does kind of act like an automatic transmission at times where it kind of steps between certain gear ratios uh, and on the other side you know it does actually in some instances provide you some engine braking so you don't actually uh, have the manual selectability with paddle shifters but you can do it right here on the left um, and so when using that you know you can 
can get it into the higher gear so when you are going down a hill or something like that you can use more engine braking rather than the brakes. So into some corners here you do notice quite a bit of body roll and then if you do push it pretty hard you'll get some understeer pretty typical for an SUV. You know, I had a video of where I tested this up in an event in Washington and I actually didn't like really the way that the steering behaved at the limit because it was kind of locking up the steering wheel. But you know, in all reality, it's very rare that you're going to be in any situation remotely close to that where you're just kind of going down a slalom and constantly changing direction. So overall, like the steering is fine, it's effortless, and the experience itself is very comfortable. Now this does have a Bose audio system, which is part of the premium package. It's a $2,200 option uh, which includes this panoramic moonroof above me and the thing about that you know $2,200 for this additional audio system personally I didn't think that the audio system sounds all that terrific it definitely sounds good uh, but this has a really quiet interior and I thought because of that you know the audio system would really shine and it doesn't sound all that spectacular you know it sounds good by all means but there's definitely other vehicles which I've driven which have sounded quite a bit better especially when you're paying that much for the premium audio system now I've completed my fuel economy test course, approximately 53 miles, primarily highway with some city and some hills mixed in. This vehicle is rated 21 on the city, 28 on the highway, and as you can see it achieved 29.3 miles per gallon on my test course. Now this vehicle actually gets 20% better fuel economy than the previous generation Murano. This is thanks to some reduced weight, better aerodynamics, and some engine and transmission tuning. I'm going to do a quick highway run here. We'll straighten out, turn off traction control, and see how this thing does getting to 60. So come to a complete stop and put down. And we're at 60. So driving on the highway, I've got the cruise control set at 65, and actually this interior is really, really quiet. It's probably one of the best ones of the vehicles I've tested. In fact, it's really close to the Escalade, so you're looking at about 72, 73 decibels. Uh, so really quiet interior, really nice for driving on highway, and this is a really rough highway, so the fact that it sounds as quiet as it does in here is pretty impressive. So thank you for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.